Hey everybody, Eric here. Um, this is a lesson I've really been looking forward to and what I want to share is my favorite strategy. I haven't gotten into it yet because I was trying to build a baseline of other content so people can, um, you know, connect with different, I, I, it's not complicated, but simpler approaches, I guess I would say, because this takes a lot of little things I do in different strategies and, and it pulls into one thing. So this strategy, it's called a cash secured strangle, the wheelbarrow, the robo, there's all sorts of other terms for it. But um, my, my mentor always called it the cash secured strangle. So that's what I call it. And essentially this is probably, I would argue 80, 85% of my trades. I do it all the time. And the reason being is because the trade rewards good management approach and it doesn't care quite as much about being directionally correct, which is great because I don't try to pick direction. I always figure it's a fool's errand over the long run. Um, it's a 50-50 chance. So I like the idea of focusing more on management and creating my trader's edge through effective management of the trade. So a couple notes. Um, my One of my mentors actually taught me this strategy. Well, he didn't teach me directly. He shares it and I, I kind of like started pulling it down. But the, the main thing is he has a very specific approach that he uses because he uses it for income. Whereas I use it to grow my portfolio. So a slightly different approach in the way that we go about it. But the vast majority of stuff that I share, it's based on what he's taught me. And I feel it's important to give that disclaimer because this isn't all my own thought where this is honestly, you know, 40 to 60% his stuff. And the reason that is, is I, I literally probably spent two years picking this strategy apart. Um, he's been trading for a really, really long time. Um, you know, he's older in his seventies now, and he's been trading essentially his whole life. So I've known, you know, the mentor I'm referring to for over a decade now. And I spent at least two years when I first started learning, tearing into this strategy so that I could truly understand what the heck it is and essentially how he does it and how I needed to do it. So I know it's a little bit longer intro than some of the others, sorry, um, but this is the cash secure triangle. Let's jump in, go over to the main screen here and start working through it. So, okay, first and foremost, I gotta slide this over a little bit so we can see the notes, cool. And let's run through it. The cash secure triangle, what is a cash secure triangle? Very simply, where we are going to sell to open puts. We're going to sell to open puts in something. And obviously, I have criteria for all of these. I'm just trying to show kind of the flow of the trade so that we have a good outline. So we're going to sell to open puts. One of two things is going to happen. We're either going to stay out of the money and just close this position and sell another put, or we're gonna wind up in the money and need to manage this trade. So there's kind of two ways we can go about managing this trade. The first way is we can work on rolling or we can allow assignment. Now, if we roll out, there's again, I'll get into all the rolling stuff, but essentially it, no matter what roll, it's gonna involve rolling out in some capacity, whether it's out at the same strike, out and down, out at, out in adding units, out in taking units away. Like I said, all different flavors of rolling, but this is one strategy. Now, if we get assigned, we're gonna break this down again. And then what we're gonna do is sell to open a call on the stock. So this is, we're gonna be assigned stock here or the underlying, whatever it is, but we're gonna be long shares of something. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sell a call against those shares. And then we're actually gonna to sell to open an additional put. So this is why it's a strangle and a cash secured or a covered strangle is because we have a covered call, right? So we're long shares and we're selling calls against it. That's a covered call. Then we have a cash secured put again. So this is designed to take on more shares if we want. So that is also cash secured. But notice it's also a call and a put. Calls and puts, in the same you know expiration whatever it's, it's essentially a strangle but we have the shares to cover the call side and then we have the capital to cover assignment on the put side 
That's why it's a cash secured strangle. So again, just working through this scenario, one of two things is gonna happen. On the covered call side, our call is either gonna be out of the money and we're just gonna sell another, or it's gonna be in the money, which we're gonna be assigned, and then we're gonna lose the shares. So that means that this part of the trade will fall off, and then we just go back to this step up here. That's it. So again, quick recap, we're gonna sell a put. One of two things is gonna happen. We're, we're either gonna be out of the money and just collect capital, or we're gonna be in the money. If we're in the money, we can choose to roll or allow assignment. If we roll, we're just gonna continue to manage the position up here. If we take assignment, now we're gonna be long shares and sell a call against it and sell an additional put. This put over here is gonna follow this structure. And then this covered call just follows this structure. The covered call is either gonna be out of the money, we're just gonna collect the, the credit and that's it. Or it's gonna be assigned and it'll be taken away at some point in the future. That's it. That's all there is to it. So each piece of this, I will absolutely admit, has specific management kind of along each step. Again, if you'll remember what I said at the beginning of this video, it's all about management. So there's a lot in this. Because of that, I'm gonna have two parts to this video. I'm gonna go over the trade itself, the nuts and bolts, most of them at least, that I like to follow. And then I'm gonna do a second video and actually work through an entire trade so that we can see what it looks like in practical application. So let's get into what this thing looks like. So first, let's kind of talk about this setup as I like to call it. Um, this is, I can't do these backwards, so forgive me. Hey, that's not too, that's weird. Um, but essentially these are the underlyings I look like, look at, sorry. So when I'm looking to sell and establish a cash secured put with the intention of potentially turning into a cash secured strangle, I want to make sure the product I'm selling a put on is something I like. Because if you remember, as part of that management tree, at some point I'm, I could own the underlying, I could be long shares. I don't wanna be long shares something I don't like. So that's why I typically look at things that pay a dividend. If I'm in it for a long time, I wanna collect a dividend. As most know who have followed any of my videos, I'm very passionate about ETFs. They limit a lot of risk, offer good returns, um, so I like ETFs a lot. And then sometimes I will use it for growth plays as well, kind of speculative trades that I would otherwise be long stock, but I just want to get paid a little bit to do it. So in general, I'm going to look within the S&P 500 if I'm trading an individual underlying. If I'm trading ETFs, I'm going to use some sort of index or sector ETF. And then for growth plays, those are more speculative, typically a smaller allocation that would follow my speculative approach. I tend to like to see things with at least a 25% IV rank. And I have a video on IV, IV rank, why it's important. Higher IV, more premium. So that's the primary reason there. Liquidity is so important. I like to see narrow bid ask spreads in the options chains. Um, in easy filters at least a million shares traded a day on the stock if it doesn't have that there's a good chance the uh, option liquidity is not going to be good i do like to use price extremes if i can so that's where i use linear regressions and moving averages to help me identify uh things that could be at some at some sort of price extreme um, which i'll get into more kind of on the second lesson when i am actively looking for something or showing you a trade but in short, if I'm selling a, you know, a, a cash secured put, I don't want to sell something that's near or at all time highs. And if I do, it's going to be a small position, that kind of thing. And it's the same thing with the moving averages. If I'm trading something that I'm potentially going to be long, I don't want to trade something that's below the 150 day or below the 50 day moving averages, simply because those tend to have more chop to the downside. Um, when I'm establishing the position, I look to capture at least a 1% return on capital. And we'll get into what that looks like a little bit later. I essentially only look for weeklies at this point. If the, the product I'm trading doesn't have weekly options, 
unless it's some sort of growth play that I really like, I won't trade it. And the reason being is because weekly options open up so many more management opportunities to us that products without weeklies do not, that it's worth every single time for me to just find something with weeklies. There's plenty of stuff that I like that has weeklies. Now, the other big metric is, you know, the typical days to expiration and when I manage the trades. And we'll get into management a little bit later. But in general, I open these up 14 to 50, somewhere in that range, 14 days to expiration to 50, depending on what I'm trying to do. But if I open up a trade that's longer than 20 days to expiration, I always manage it around 20 days once it gets to that mark. And the reason for that is because if I open up something longer than 20 days to expiration, it means I am expecting to collect theta. This is more of a theta play, and I'm trying to reduce my overall risk on the table. So once it gets within 20 days to expiration, that's when we see gamma risk starting to increase more rapidly. And again, you can review my video on, on options uh, Greeks if you need a refresher on that. But that, that's exactly why I like to manage around 20 days to expiration because gamma starts to increase around then. Now, one key highlight is once it gets to 20 days to expiration is a decision point. Am I interested in rolling, yes or no? If I want to roll, it's typically going to happen around 20 days to expiration. If I'm willing to allow assignment, then I will allow it to go within that 20 days to expiration window. So with that being said, let's talk about how we go about setting up these trades. First of all, one of the most important steps with this trade is allocation. You have to allocate for the trade. The reason being, I say this all the time, is I prefer to be able to sell personally at least four puts. And the reason for that is if I sell a 20 strike and then I get assigned at 20 and the stock is now trading at 15, I might not be able to sell a call at my basis and collect anything. So sometimes the best strategy instead of selling a call at that point in time is to wait and just sell another put maybe at the 12 strike, which is below the current price of the underlying. Then let's say I get assigned again then. Now all of a sudden my basis becomes the average between these two and it's not gonna be all the way up at 20. I'll be somewhere in the middle and then I'll start to keep up or at least stay closer to the current price of the underlying first and then second, more importantly, I'll get back to break even faster. Because if these two cost average, and let's just say, you know, the, this, because typically I, I wouldn't necessarily sell the same number of lots. That's why I'm not just going for the mid here. Sometimes I'll have like two lots here and then maybe add one lot here. So real, it's 300 total shares, 200 at that price, 100 at this price. Um, but again, just for the, the sake of an example, let's say that it is 16, something like that. Now, what that means is instead of being hung up at 20, 16 is now my basis. I do have more shares on. However, I, once it hits 16, I'm at my break even, vice needing it to get back to 20. So that's why averaging and keeping capital to add to the trade is so, so, so important. That's why it's the first one on this list. So that's part of, again, going back to this concept of management being key. This is why, and I just realized I'm already 14 minutes into this video. I'm sorry, it's gonna be a, a long one because I'm packing in a lot of metrics. Um, so first off, allocation, super important. Next up, I have a certain delta that I will pick for my initial short put, and I have a certain amount of initial establishment I will allow, and it's all based on the percent off of all-time highs. So we already reviewed the expiration piece, so I'll skip over that. Now let's go down to this, this little chart I made for you. This is where I'm gonna enter the short put, and then this is how much I'm gonna allow on the initial trade. So let's say I'm trading something and I allocate $50,000. That means that if I see something that's 50% off all-time highs, I will allow myself to use 90% of that. 
If I see something that's in this range, I'll allow myself to use something around 70. Now, I wanna be very, very clear. These are guidelines. I can, I can use my brain at any point during this and adjust as I see necessary. But the reason why I highlight the fact that I have metrics here is because especially when you're first starting, knowing what to look for is so helpful. But because I've been doing this for a very long time, not even very long, that's a little dramatic, but I've been doing it for a while now, 13 years, and I allow myself to have creative license with it because I trust my judgment because I have history to prove it. But when you're first starting out having metrics that are based on some sort of um, rationale is super important. So the same thing with the delta. The, high, the closer we are to all-time highs, the lower the delta I allow myself to sell. I never want to go below a 16 delta unless I'm doing a different style trade because then the risk to reward isn't a great uh, compromise. Now, if we're really far off, time, off all-time highs, I'll even go all the way as far as in the money. But typically, if you'll notice the one connecting file between all of these different percentages is this guy right here, 30. I sell 30 delta all the time. It's because there's a 70%, it's a 70% chance trade that it works in my favor. Um, and I, I'm good with that, that overall probability. So this is gonna be the first part. Um, next, I'm gonna share the management. I apply for the cash secured strangle, and then there will even be a third segment where I'm gonna go over an actual example so that we can see it in practice. Again, this is a long, long segment because this is my bread and butter, this is what I do. Um, so there's a lot that I put into it. Um, so I, I, I hope you, you know, understand why the videos are lengthy, but it's to pack in as much value as I can. So next up will be management and then a uh, actual example of a trade. All right, talk to everybody later.